Hi, I'm Sarah from the Ag Exploration Team, and I'm going to show you how to do the activity from the Feeding Our Future Genetic Technology and Agriculture lesson. If your students have already learned about DNA, then they probably know it's a small microscopic molecule that's part of every living thing, and that DNA codes for all of the traits in that organism. Normally you can't see DNA with the naked eye, but in this lesson we're going to extract a lot of DNA molecules from corn and from strawberries, and with all those DNA molecules together you can actually see them, so it's pretty neat. Let's get started. So before you begin the lesson, the teacher will need to prepare the DNA extraction buffer. So for that you'll need some kind of mixing vessel. I used this pint-sized mason jar. I only made half of the amount that's listed in the lesson because I just needed a little bit of the solution for the demonstration. If you're going to make the full amount, you'll need a jar that's a little bit bigger. So a mixing vessel or a jar. You'll also need water, 450 milliliters if you're making the full amount, but again I only used half. Non-chlorinated water is important to use, so if you're on city water, you may want to consider using bottled water to make sure that the solution works properly. You'll also need a shampoo. Just regular suave works well. You want a shampoo that does not have conditioners and it needs to have EDTA. And if you look at the ingredients list, this one says EDTA, so you'll know that it's in there. And then just regular table salt. Um, the directions for mixing the extraction buffer are in the lesson. And if you mix it in something like a jar, you can put a lid on, you can keep it and use it again later. It will keep for a while. Aside from the extraction solution, here are the other materials that you'll need for the lesson. One pair of goggles per student, because isopropyl alcohol can be harmful if it gets in your eyes. For each group, you'll need a 5-ounce plastic cup, a Ziploc style baggie, either sandwich size or snack size works well too. A number two cone shaped coffee filter. A pipette, we're using three milliliter pipettes but other sizes might work too. Some food to extract the DNA from. Here we're going to use fresh sweet corn. Um, you can use a variety of different kinds of fruits and vegetables and the lesson gives an indication of the amount that you'll need but you want to use either fresh or frozen, not canned. You'll also need for each group a paper clip, and I've bent my paper clip into a hook shape, which I'll use later to extract the DNA that we um, separate. You'll also need some isopropyl alcohol like this, chilled. So I've had mine in the refrigerator. Each group's going to need 15 milliliters, so I've already measured my 15 milliliters into this test tube, and it's chilled. And then an empty test tube for each group. It's helpful to also have a test tube holder, but if you don't have a test tube holder, you can always use an extra cup. You just need to be really careful because it is prone to tipping over when the test tubes are full. The first thing that you want to do is put the corn, or whatever you're using, into the plastic bag. Just getting some of the air out. Then you want to close the bag and smash the corn for about a minute or maybe two minutes until you get it really good and smashed. The next thing that you want to do is add your extraction buffer. You need 10 milliliters. So I'm using a 3 milliliter pipette, so I'm going to have to put three full squirts and then one with just one. All right, so there's my 10 milliliters. I'm going to seal this bag again and mix my smashed corn and my extraction solution. Mix it together for about a minute or so. The next step is to set up a system to drain. So I'm going to put the coffee filter inside of this cup. 
and fold the edges over so the filter is hanging inside the cup, but I don't want the bottom of the filter to touch the bottom of the cup. And then I'm going to pour everything from this bag into the filter so it will drain. And then just wait until all the liquid drains through the filter into the cup, which will probably take about 10 minutes. Once the liquid has drained through the filter, you're ready for the next step. And the next step involves using the isopropyl alcohol, so I'm gonna put my goggles on. Okay, I've had all the fluid drain out of the filter. You'll need at least half a milliliter of extract, and you can use up to three milliliters. And all you want to do is take your test tube of chilled isopropyl alcohol and add your extraction into that test tube. And I've got just about three milliliters, and that'll work. So I'll put that in the test tube. And then you want to swirl for just a couple seconds. Swirl, not shake, and not hard, just very gently, just to combine. And then you just need to wait. So I'll leave it in the test tube holder for a little while and come back in a little while to see what happened. We've waited a little while, so now we can see what happened. Here's my test tube where I did the corn, and then I also prepared the same, or did the same experiment with a strawberry, so we have two to look at. In the corn test tube, there's not a whole lot to see, but if you look very closely, you can see that the DNA separated, and it's floating around kind of near the middle of the test tube. Um, it's basically these chunky white patches floating in the liquid, and if you hold it up in front of a dark background, you can see it much more easily. The reaction is much more apparent when you use a strawberry. And you can see this white stuff floating at the top of the test tube here, that's the DNA. And you can actually take your paperclip tool and pull that DNA out. So that stuff on the paperclip there, that's all the strawberry DNA. Now the reason that you see such a difference between the strawberry and the corn is because the length of the chains of DNA is different. In the corn, the DNA strands are very short, so they will clump together a little bit, but not as readily as the strawberries. So they don't form a big clump and flow to the surface. Whereas in the strawberry, the DNA strands are much longer, so it's easier for those to clump together, and once they've all formed a clump, they float up to the top. So what you see is a little bit different, but you can see DNA extracted in each one. That wraps up this lesson, but for more information about ag exploration, to download our other lessons, and to access all of our resource materials, visit us online at www.extension.umd.edu slash agsploration.